Hello, welcome to Inside the Box, where we explore digital logic and hardware design. On today's adventure are state machines, a very important concept in digital logic. Every, practically everything uses them. First thing that's important to know is the difference between what they call the combinational logic versus the sequential logic. In combinational logic, if you have an AND gate, say like this, here's his input, here's his output, here's an AND gate, and in combinational logic, as these inputs change, if you put switches on them, say, and the output, little red, let's put an LED here, the inputs will affect the output as they change. So you push both switches down, the LED will come on, and the moment one of the switches comes up, the LED will shut off. Sequential logic is a little different because it's pulsed by a clock and it has a memory, meaning it kind of runs like a film through a projector. And it has each individual frame passes, it's a different state brings up, we hear that word state. You'll hear it a lot because it refers to the memory of the current frame, if you might use the film analogy, of the system. So now, what will happen in a sequential circuit is we have a clock over here that's ticking. And every time it beats, it'll go to the next frame in the in the film, or in this case, the next state of the sequential system. So any sequential system can be re represented as a state machine that looks at its current inputs and makes a decision based on the inputs and will change his input for that state and only for that state and it will not change again until the next beat of the clock. The simplest state machines, well the simpler ones are the flip-flops where you'll have you have your clock input which is driven by Mr. Clock over here and we have an input, they usually call it Q, or no, they usually call it, no, Q is the, let's use D, use a D flip-flop. So, in the D flip-flop, what will happen is Q will only reflect state of the input whenever the clock is pulsed. So, if we put a, we put a switch here, close the switch, and we fire the clock, the output will go high. On the clock state. And if the clock does and until the next clock fires, this you can open and close the switch all you like. The output will not change until the next beat of the clock. Let's say the switch is now open and there's no longer a circuit. The light will go out on the next beat of the clock. So sequential logic has a memory for its current state and will not change until the next in firing of the clock to tell it go to the next state. Okay, 
Oh, <laughs> well, I went on the station break that you're not going to see because I edited that out. Mr. Clock got an upgrade. He's now Mr. Clock 2.0. <laughs> Which reminds me, I didn't really get into combinational logic gates because in VHDL, the hardware language, these don't show up much as they would if you were doing this through traditional means of doing it on a breadboard with gates and trying to minimize logic equations, you won't see any of that. But if you want to know a little more about those, leave the comments. If I get enough comments, I'll do a video about combinational logic. Moving on, I described a D flip-flop and how it works sequentially. The memory is a little more apparent if I use a T flip-flop. So again, he's driven by Mr. Clock on this clock line. And what will happen on a T flip-flop is he will only change if the T input is high when the clock comes in, but there's a catch on a T flip flop, the input will change. So if the input was on, if the output was on, when the input comes to one on the clock, he flips. He'll go from one to zero or zero to one. So if this was a one and the clock beat and the light is off, we got a one come in and the clock beat, tick, the light comes on. If this now goes to a zero and the clock ticks, the light doesn't change. You know, tick, 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 light will stay on. Put this to a 1 again, tick, off goes the light. And subsequent talks, it, the light will change every time the clock ticks, and this line is a 1. So we, the T means toggle, basically. And so you can think the input on each frame of the film. The, t, the output is currently a zero. The T, let's see what the T is, a zero. So the clock will tick between frames here, and as long as he's still zero, it won't change. On this frame, oh, we're going to have a one here. And the T line is going to change. If we put it back to zero on the next frame, he's going to stay where he is. Put a one. And on the next frame, he'll flip back to a zero. And rinse, lather, repeat for subsequent frames of the film. And each frame of the film is each time the clock ticks. So we usually write state machines using state diagrams, which will indicate all the possible ways the state machine can work. So with a D flip-flop, you have the two states of, of 0 and 1, which is, represents the Q. And you'll have conditions for changing the state. You ignore the clock because the clock is assumed on state diagrams. So you have the conditions for changing the state. And on a D flip-flop, this is the D, there, the condition for the state changing is that the D input is 1 on the clock transition. So he goes to 1, it become 1. If D is in 0, it will become 0. If D doesn't change, in this case, if you're in the 0 state and D is 0, D won't change. And that just indicates a loop to itself, indicating no change in the state. Same on the other side. If D is 0 here, no in inputs off, off, then it just stays at the 1. And the T flip-flop diagram, similar, but the change is on, the, the state change will be on a different condition. In this case, the T equals 1 condition will flip the 0 to 1, it will also f flip it from the 1 back to 0. And, of course, it stays on the same state if t is 0.
I guess. So now the next question is how to turn these into code in PHDL. We'll use a simple example and use a little traffic light. Some paper here. Uh, we'll do a traffic light. You can stay put. Oh, we know the traffic lights. There's a, a traffic light will have a red light, or it'll have a yellow light, or it'll have a green light. And I'll represent these with binary numbers. We'll use 0, 1 for the red. We'll use 1, 0 for the yellow, and 1, 1 for the green. So there's obviously going to be three states. So we have the 0, 1. And we have the 1, 0. And we have the 1, 1. So this state... So this state machine is just not, we're just going to sit, have a traffic light that goes red and then it goes green and then it'll go the yellow and red. And so it's going to be a state that the machine, it's only going to change its state when the clock fires. It doesn't have any external inputs because I'm just keeping this simple for the example. So we're going to go from red to green. Green's going to go to yellow. Yellow is going to go to red. So, fairly simple state machine. So, now what do we look like in VHDL? Well, we need a signal. We need a signal. We call him, call it light. And he is a and he is a standard logic vector, which just basically means a bag of bits, and we have two bits in the bag. So that's going to be one to zero. Semicolon is important to VHDL. If you miss them, you get all sorts of problems. And we'll just call this traffic signal. And he is a And he is a process. Be sure when you're in your editor, you're typing these all in the same line. I'm just trying to keep it in what I have room for here on the paper. And he takes the input from Mr. Good old Mr. Clock. And yes process line ends with an is and then we begin him and the magic happens on the rising edge of a clock that's mr. clock over there so if the rising edge of mr. clock so that means we're never he goes from low to high at the moment he does so. Now the magic of the state machine happens in a case statement. And basically the general idea is in the case statement
general idea in the case statement is you're going to list all the states, which is our, these parts of the diagram, and then within each within each state, you're going to decide what conditions bring it to other states. So, so when we are in state, say, O1, which is the is the red light. We're going to go and change the state to the green light. So we're going to change light, signal light, and it's going to become the case value, the case value for the green light, or the binary value for the green light. Know where your semicolons go in VHDL because the compiler goes nuts when you don't. Oh, you yeah, can. Okay. So we list the red light and we have the yellow light, which makes him into the red light. Uh, this is continuing on. So I'm out of edge here. And now we have the green light. What do we do when we are the green light? Yes, we become the yellow light. And then you have to finish where you started, which was the case, you have to end it, and you have to end this check for the Mr. Clock being, yes, the semicolons matter, very much so, and then we have the end of the process, and if you put this into a VHDL design and had some LEDs that represent the light, you would get the... Okay, so we've made a code to do the traffic light. I'm going to get into something else that you pro would frequently do with a state machine. Having a state machine change its state in the middle and being able to do something else and then repeating the cycle. So put it short, a ping pong effect. So let's use well, four states. Let's start with four states. So we'll, let's go have four states. Now let's go zero, 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 or one actually. Zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero. And you can sort of see the one is moving in towards one side. So if we had this state machine and we just went alongside it, it would go to 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, and it would go back to 1. So it just kind of would get to this thing and then it would, so the 1 would go left and then it would stop back to this and the 1 would, it would just keep going. <laughs> and I have a board example I'm going to get into. For this, if we want a ping pong, the one has to start going the other way as well. So we need four more states. So the easiest way to do this is we can look, we need the state to capture the direction that the one is moving. In this case, since it's going towards the left, we put L's on these guys. So we need to put in four more states where the one is going the other way.
So from here, so we'd have the one, but now we want to go right, so. So now what we want to do is we'll start at this date and normal. So now it's moved to the left, all the way to the left, and now we want to move it to the right. So we're going to end up with having it go to the right. Yes, I missed this one. I'll get to why. And I don't want to go to that one. I want to go to that one. The actual loop is, is these four states. You don't want to totally omit these states because it's quite possible that you'll end up starting in one of these states and you have to be able to have have it do the right thing. So if we're in the old one going R, we want to switch to going left. Uh, yeah, we want to switch to going left. And if we're at the 1000 and we want to uh, we're going right we have to switch it to start moving left again and this handles all the possibilities so now we have the ping pong effect we start here and it'll have the 001 and it'll go 010 it'll go to 100 It'll go to 1000, move to this state, and now it's going the other way until it gets back to 001. And you can see if you started from 001 and you were trying to go right, it would do the right thing and start going left. If you started at 1000 going right, it would do the, start, the right thing and start going 0100 going left. Oh, nope, I'm going to leave this mistake in. Nope, this isn't right. It's actually got to go to, this is the rightmost end. It's actually got to start going over. No. I'll just work out what it has to do. This is, can't go any further right. It does have to go left. <laughs> This is right after all. It has to go to the left. It doesn't have anywhere to go to the right. This one doesn't have anywhere to go to the left. It has to... This one doesn't have anywhere to go. It's on the left so side. It has to start going... It has to start going to the right. It has to go this way. So that is the wrong one. No, that is, yep, yeah, that's the wrong one. Move over, move over, move over, 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 <coughs> over, over. Okay, now I have it right. So, this will implement the state machine that has a ping pong effect, so it'll go, it'll go first go all the way one way, and then it'll go all the way the other way. This kind of state changing gets important in processors and more complicated logic systems. So now I'm going to get into the board project that I had set up for this episode, which is to you create the ping pong effect in the, with on the LEDs on the Zybo board. It'll go, I use the switches on the board, it'll go one way with the switches down and I put one of the switches up, it'll go to the right and I've got two more that do different countings. So I've got a counter that'll count in regular binary, so, so we have the, it'll count in regular binary, so it'll start at 01, it'll go to Oh, 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 yeah, I missed a zero. 
0011, 01, 00, and so forth, up to 1111, right, and then go back to zero. And then the last one will count in what's called gray codes, which is a special <coughs> form of counting in binary where only one bit ever changes between different numbers. You can see if you go from 3 to 4 in binary, there's actually more than one bit changing. These two bits here are changing. And if you go from 1111 to 0, all four bits are changing. So if you, you were using a mechanical system and these were switches, you might get an incorrect value because these switches are never going to switch at the exact same time. So it would be better to have only one switch ever changing. And then you don't get all sorts of hardware errors. So in gray code, it'll it'll start counting like it starts off in binary. It'll go to 0 to 1. But then it does something a little different. It'll go to 1, 1, and then 1, 0. Now this, this doesn't tell you how to get the gray code, but getting gray codes are easy enough. So if you start with just a single bit, you'll get a 0. And then it'll change to a 1. The way this works in gray codes is that now you you have this implied zero that, that was always there. So if you put the zeros in, you know you're going to need a one in this spot. <coughs> and to do the gray codes, you take the codes you already have and flip them. So you, you should have a one in the last spot and you had a zero. So now you've got the two big gray codes. And you know these were zero. So these are going to be one. And now you do the same thing. You start with 1 0, 1 1, 0 1, 0 0. And it would be the exact same process to go from 3 bits to 4 bits. These are all 0. And then there would be the last 8 bits with the 1, the last 8 values with the 1s. So, and it's the same deal. You re reverse the sequence. So, so you have one o o. Pen's quitting on me. Then you have one o one, one one one, one one o, o one o, o one one, o o one, o o o. And you can see that when it goes from the last value back to zero. It only changes the single bit, unlike this changing all the bits. And that gives you the gray codes. So let's set this board up and start programming it. This code will be available on the GitHub site that I have set up for the channel. So I'm just going to I'm just going into Vivado now to set the program up. Okay, and there's okay, there's the default as the LEDs going to the left. And the first switch, make the LEDs go the other way. And the next switch. We'll make it start counting in regular binary. Oh, no, oh, I put the gray code counter on first. That was the wrong one. That's the gray code counter. And you can see only one light ever changes at a time with the gray codes. I wanted, there's the regular binary counter. You'll see it counts, and then it carries, counts, carries, and that's the regular binary counter. And finally, I have a ping pong mode, which is what I just did on the diagram. So now it's going one way, and it gets to one end, it goes to the other end, and so forth, and so forth. So thank you for watching and if you like this video please like it and subscribe and more will be to come.